Good morning, everybody, and thanks for joining us uh, for our annual general meeting. This is our third webinar edition of our annual general meeting, and we're broadcasting today from uh, the campus of the University of California at Davis. And I want to thank our host for allowing us to use this space and look forward to this as the beginning of a wonderful collaboration between the Specialty Coffee Association of America and the University of California at Davis. <coughs> so we're, we're here with the members of the board of directors of the SCA and senior staff, uh, and we want to review with you um, our activities in the 2012-2013 fiscal year. And I know it may seem a little bit, bit late in the year, but um, we want to be able to have access to fully audited financials and to wrap up all the details of that year. Board members uh, will be presenting various parts of the report, and so we'll be shifting from presenter to presenter. And we'll get a chance to run through um, the whole range of activities for that fiscal year, the one that ended September 30th, 2013. And there'll be a little bit of commentary about what's going on in the current year um, in the 2013-14 year. Uh, but the details, what you see on the screen, the financials, et cetera, uh, will be referencing that 2012-13 year. At the end of the presentation, there'll be an opportunity for questions. Um, you can uh, post questions uh, through the Twitter feed. Um, we're able to catch them here, and we'll try to answer every question that comes to us. We've allotted one hour for this presentation. Uh, I anticipate that we'll use slightly less than that for our conversation with you. Uh, and then we can pick up questions and address any questions that you have for us. So thank you, all of those of you who are taking the time out of your day uh, to see this, uh, this webcast of our annual general meeting, and uh, we look forward to imparting some knowledge. So first off, let's talk a little bit about the organization. The mission of the SCA is to recognize, develop, and promote specialty coffee. And if we're successful in that, we hope to realize our vision of being the recognized authority, the standard setter, and really the professional development organization that supports a vibrant and growing specialty coffee community around the world. And all the work that we do throughout the year is driven by this mission as we pursue this vision for a world in which everybody who's involved in the specialty coffee value chain uh, can improve their lives and livelihoods. As I mentioned, this is the 2012-13 year in review, so uh, some of the folks in the room are not the same as the folks who were on the board of directors for that year. Um, this would have been the board of directors that uh, completed their, their term in, the 2000, in April of 2013. Um, we were led that year by uh, our president, Max Kidden, uh, and uh, Paul Thornton was our vice president. Uh, Paul, of course, moved up to president for the 13-14 the, uh, year with his term ending on uh, May 1st of 2014. And this year we are led uh, uh, anew uh, by our good friend Sean Hamilton, who has uh, served as uh, second vice president in the 12-13 year and uh, as vice president in the 13-14 year and now as president. So we've got uh, the current board of directors in the room, and uh, as I mentioned, they'll be coming over to talk to you, but we should give some thanks to all those directors who participated in this 12, 2012, 2013 year for their dedication and commitment and service. Uh, it's a challenging job to, to be a director with this organization, and it's an all-volunteer activity. So each of those directors gives a substantial amount of time and energy, um, and it's donated to the organization and through the organization that's donated to all of the members of the organization. And they did a fantastic job uh, in that year, and we're going to go ahead and start looking at the highlights of the year. We're going to start off by taking a look at how we um, gather the resources to carry on our activities. And to go through that, I'd like to introduce the current second vice president and formerly the treasurer of the SCA, Mr. Ben Pitts. Thank you, Rick. I will provide an overview of the SCAA's revenue and how its work is funded. Uh, the funding categories, as you can see on the screen, are from membership, uh, the SCAA conference or annual event, <clears throat> educational programs, which include the barista and roaster gills, and then resource center and online sales. In terms of the revenue ranking, the event uh, comprises 
the majority at right at 60% of overall revenue. And the main components of that are the expo itself, the symposium, and exhibitor participation. Membership dues and edu educational programs comprise about 15% each of the funding and then Resource Center and other sales comprise the remaining 10%. In the year ended September 2013, the SCAA expanded revenue by 10%, as you can see in the lower right hand corner of the slide. Uh, this was great news. Uh, the SCAA was able to expand its mission and the revenue mix became more diversified as we saw education and training programs growing at a faster rate than any other categories. And this bodes well for the future for a diversified revenue stream and enabling the SCA to expand its work in a more comprehensive way. Thank you, Ben, for that. Uh, as Ben noted, uh, this is a, a mix of uh, revenue centers and, uh, of course, our annual event continues to be uh, the most significant driver for us, but we have uh, worked very hard to diversify our revenue stream not only into uh, into other activities uh, such as the Roasters Guild retreat and, and camps, etc. We've also worked to expand our membership base and to increase our sales in other arenas. To go through in a little more detail the financial highlights of uh, the 2012-13 year, it's my pleasure to introduce our current treasurer from Inter American Coffee, Mr. Guy Burdett. Thank you, Rick. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm very happy to report that the uh, financial condition of the association uh, continues to improve. Um, we've been working for many years to overcome a, a deficit in our uh, unrestricted net assets, and uh, we're, we're making good progress, and hopefully by the end of uh, 2014, uh, we will move that to a, uh, to a positive, positive balance. Um, what we have on the screen right now is just a, synops a little synopsis of the uh, financial highlights. Um, if you want to see a full report, um, there's a link down at the bottom, uh, fca.org 2013 financials, where you can get a full audited report um, to review. Um, starting uh, on the right-hand side under the activities, um, you know, as uh, Ben touched on earlier, we're seeing uh, revenue and support continue to increase. Um, from 2012 to 2013, um, associated with uh, you know more more activities and providing more services, uh, the expenses uh, increased as well. Um, 2012, we showed a profit of two, $294,000 or a surplus of $294,000, and in 2013, $115,000. Um, the 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 nice result of that is that we've seen a small increase in. Uh, in our uh, total assets, uh, we've seen a small decrease in our total liabilities, and on the bottom line, the, the net assets unrestricted, uh, we see improving and, and you know moving out of a deficit situation and hopefully into a, a positive situation by the end of 2014. Thank you. Thanks, Guy, for that. Um, just want to remind everybody that we that the. the SCA is a 501c6. It's a nonprofit corporation, and this increase in the financial position is meaningful because it's an increase in the value of the association to all of you, to the members. Um, the shareholders, such as they are in the organization, are in fact all the members. And the unique uh, value proposition of a nonprofit organization like ours is that as we increase that value, that value is uh, accessible for the members uh, and for the members exclusively. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, that membership right now. Um, as you know, we are a membership organization that's driven by uh, a, a blend of company memberships and then uh, professional uh, guild memberships. So we have SCA members and then we have BGA members and Roasters Guild members. To talk a little bit about those numbers, uh, it's my absolute pleasure to uh, introduce uh, our immediate past president and uh, one of the uh, guys who really uh, has pushed this organization forward over the last couple of years, my good friend, Mr. Paul Thorne. Thank you, Rick. Hello, everybody. Um, as you can see, in uh, September 2013, our, our membership uh, totaled to right around 2,080 members. Um, currently, uh, that membership is 
2,280 members, so up about 200 members. Um, primary growth continues to be to revolve around specialty coffee-oriented retailers, roasters, and roaster retailers, and they continue to be the primary growth uh, sectors. Um, the association uh, continues to design and update training materials, certify classes, um, and maintains a, a relatively high level of engagement with the with the uh, um, the industry to capture the new tools that come to light to help uh, help keep these things updated. Um, and um, the training material that's coming out has been has been phenomenal. I think members are really starting to reap the benefits of that. Uh, guilds are growing. Uh, membership experiences continue to to improve. Um, I was at in uh, uh, Stevenson, Washington, over the weekend at the Roasters Guild retreat up at Skamania Lodge, um, an event that is um, I love that event. Um, the experiences there end at the Barista Guild event and other events continue to to just get better and better and better. Um, um, something that really jumped out to me at the Roaster Skill Retreat was the, the connection between baristas and roasters um, is getting even tighter and tighter and I think people are starting to realize um, um, a better way to deliver a improved coffee experience uh, to consumers um, um, that lying in um, um, that tighter connection with roasters and, and baristas um, it's also kind of exciting to see um, improvements from you know the electronic world. Um, it was easy access to the visuals of the, the auction um, that was taking place there. Um, had it on TV screens and things like that. So it's pretty cool stuff. Um, so that's all I have to report. Thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. The uh, SCA membership uh, does continue to grow, and it continues to grow not only in the number of participants as SCA member companies, um, but in the number of people at those companies who participate. Um, there are, it, it's significant to look at uh, the number of folks within a company that register under their SCA uh, company member identity. Besides having uh, having the benefits of membership that uh, we like to, to brag about in terms of access to resources. One of the primary activities of the association is our events. We not only do our annual event, we offer a host of other events that are more regionally designed and that are targeted at specific constituencies. And we've worked hard to not only improve the quality of those, as Paul was noting, but to improve the number of those. So to go through some of the things that we've been doing, it's now my pleasure to introduce the Chairman of the Technical Standards and Statistics Committee, Mr. Skip Finley. Hi. Um, I'd like to take a moment to address some of the uh, events that we did this year. Um, so the SCA produced five events in the calendar year 2012-2013 uh, in conjunction with both the, uh, the Roasters Guild and the Barista Guild. There's two other events. Um, so the SCA event this year was held, that year was held in Boston. Uh, it was our third time to that particular uh, event hall, and we had over 9,300 attendees. Um, it was our fifth annual symposium with over 400 attendees attending that, and it was our 13th annual um, Roasters Guild retreat with over 222 attendees um, at that event, which was actually sold out, along with two barista camps, one being held in Santa Barbara, one being held in Lake Lawn, Wisconsin, both of which sold out with over 290 total attendees. Um, in conjunction with those scheduled events, the Barista Guild and the Roasters Guild, um, with a new initiative of member-driven events, MDEs, have started to reach out to the general membership and have regional events um, with uh, that constituency. So um, we're definitely growing, and it's good to be seeing some of these things happening on a regular basis. Thanks, Skip. You know, should add a couple of things that uh, coming up for this year. We're bringing along uh, another barista camp, and we're looking in the coming year to expand uh, Roasters Guild activities to yet another regional presence. Uh, 
We also uh, had a very successful uh, conference this year in Seattle that uh, somewhere around uh, 11,000 of you dropped in on, and it was great to have you there. And it's worth noting two things about that activity, and we'll, we'll save some of it for next year's presentation, but just for the, for the purposes of this year's presentation, um, we had two interesting things. We had 30% uh, of the total attendees at our event in Seattle this year um, came from countries other than the United States. So the global stature of the organization and its activities continues to grow. It's also worth noting that 45% of the attendees were under the age of 35 and a full 80% of the attendees were under the age of 55. So for a couple of us in the room, we can see the end is near and we look forward to uh, to uh, seeing the, the new generation really take things over. Speaking of the new generation, uh, up next uh, is uh, one of those, uh, a member of that new generation. Uh, hard to figure out all the superlatives to introduce this person, but a two-time uh, U.S. national barista champion, uh, a longtime board member, a former chair of the BGA Executive Council, and one of the most dynamic people in specialty coffee today. My pleasure to introduce Ms. Heather Perry. Thank you, Rick. I'm going to go with the representing the under 35 while I can. I'm going to go with it while I have it. Um, so the 2013 U.S. Coffee Championships were fantastic for us here at the SCAA. A um, few things. We have regionals leading up to the U.S. Ch coffee Championships. And uh, for the first time that year, we did the big central event. So we combined the central, north, and south. And it was such a big success that it's a model that we're using currently. So this year, we've got three regionals. Uh, we've got the big west, the big central, and the big east. But going back to 2013, we had our five regionals and all led up to Boston, where we held the U.S. Coffee Championships. And we had Aaron McCarthy winning the U.S. Brewers Cup Championship and Pete Licata winning the U.S. Barista Championship. And they both went on to Australia where they both took home title of world champions. So really great way to represent the U.S. that year. Um, and, you know, leading up into uh, this year, Seattle was a great show for us. And this year coming up in Seattle again, we actually get to host the World Barista Championship. So really going to be an exciting expo coming up in a few months um, and we'll be hosting all of the US coffee championships in February in Long Beach so that'll be really exciting and it's all going to kick off with our first regional in Palm Springs the Big West being held alongside barista camp so a lot going on and we're really excited about it. Thanks Heather. Uh, it's nice to turn out a world champion uh, and uh, looking forward to turning out some more but Undoubtedly, that's an activity that was pioneered by Heather, who, uh, as a U.S. champion, uh, represented us extraordinarily well. We continue to uh, enjoy the interaction with the baristas as they get a chance to really hone their skills and demonstrate them to the coffee community here in the U.S. and now to the coffee community in the world. And it's always our intent to, to use the barista competitions as a platform to demonstrate mastery of the kinds of skills that we try to develop in our professional development programs. And we have a wide range uh, of uh, opportunities to access that professional development and education throughout the organization. And uh, barista training is one piece of that, but there are many other opportunities. And to expound on that, it's now my pleasure to introduce the chair of our professional development uh, activities, Mr. Andrew Hetzel. Hi there. Thank you, Rick. Yeah, 2012-2013 was definitely a breakout year for the education programs at SCAA. Uh, as you can see on the slide right now, we had a number of people participating in the certificate programs and certification programs that we have available for uh, baristas and roasters. And also in uh, 2013, we launched the first coffee taster certificate programs. We'll have a lot more to announce about that next year as more people uh, participate with that program. A couple of things I'd like to point out on this slide that are... are um, particularly noteworthy. First of all, take a look at the lead instructor credentials. 807 professionals have now gone through the SCAA uh, instructor development program, which helps to standardize how teaching is given at SCAA uh, conferences as well as at SCAA certified labs around the country. Uh, another point, you see the breakout on the uh, left-hand side of your screen, e-learning program. We're making a lot more of our content available online, 
so that you can take it uh, when you want and where you want, in some cases from your own home or from your own uh, training facility in your office. So uh, SEA learning continues to be one of the fastest growing, in fact, the fastest growing segment of SEAA. Uh, we're going to be offering more courses, we're going to be offering more certifications, and at more locations around the world. I'd like to point out that uh, uh, we have new international partner locations that are coming online regularly. Uh, for the, uh, this year already, we have new facilities that are teaching in Australia, Taiwan, Hong Kong, and China. More are being added all the time. Uh, we're also adding new content to the lineup, including an, a, a lab inspector credential, which is already available. So that helps to add uh, more labs, more training facilities, give you better access to the content that we have. So uh, it's a fast-growing segment of SCAA. It's one that uh, uh, our members enjoy and, and want more of, and it's something that we're going to be delivering more of in the coming years. Thank you for that, Andrew. I, I can confirm uh, how rapidly this education program continues to develop. Uh, like Paul, I was at the Roasters Guild retreat uh, this past weekend, and uh, I can tell you that that uh, event has evolved into one of the most significant uh, educational opportunities that Roasters have anywhere in the world. And uh, it took, uh, took a lot of folks doing a lot of work for a long time to get it to that place, but it continues to be refined. Uh, and to be more and more effective. There are a couple of things coming up for our professional development activities, not the least of which is an active program to harmonize our educational standards and our curriculum with other international bodies, such as the Specialty Coffee Association of Europe. But our goal is to make sure we've got a cohesive program um, where education uh, is transferable to the benefit of our members anywhere they go up in the world. Along with uh, providing great education in a practical sense uh, through our e-learning environments and through training going on at events and in certified labs and with our international education partners throughout the world, we also uh, have a lot of focus on publishing uh, the latest and greatest knowledge. And here to talk a little bit about some of those resources, studies, and publications uh, is our former uh, favorite employee and, uh, and now uh, one of the great leaders in our board, uh, my good friend, Ms. Tracy King. Hi, everyone. Um, so as Rick mentioned, another area of expansion for your association was around publications and information resources. And these are really all designed to provide members with a broad range of perspectives, um, certainly keep everyone current on, on topical issues, and most importantly, give uh, disseminate practical information that's going to help our members uh, improve the way they run their businesses or help our members with their career advancement. So 2012-2013, uh, um, one of the things, the, the really very cool things that happened with the, these initiatives is that they went digital. Um, the, the especially Chronicle, Coffee Chronicle went on a new format and that has really allowed um, a lot more access to the material, a lot more timely and relevant content. And in addition to the reports that are listed in, in the annual report, I would add that the, there's been uh, additional green guide modules. Um, a, the Sustainability Council and SAA issued a white paper on food insecurity. And there's another outlook on specialty coffee consumers. So with, with those two, um, with the, the sustainability publications, you know, that content's really being driven by a, a very active and engaged sustainability council right now. And they're, they're publishing an incredible amount of work, of work helping to guide members through some of the complexity of these issues. But with, with the Green Guide in particular, that's a great resource because that not only helps retailers work through, um, you know, to be a more sustainable business, but the, the, the tips and the, the guide, what, what those guides are doing is helping our members can help our members also drive costs down in their own operations. Um, and then especially coffee consumer, I think uh, some of you have seen the, the communications that have gone out since symposium, but we're looking at a very different generation of coffee drinkers. And what these materials are designed to do is help prepare our membership for how we can best appeal to those coffee drinkers. Thanks, Tracy, for that. And uh, thanks for all your contributions in that in all those arenas in this reporting and studies and publications uh, of the SCAA. <coughs> Tracy mentioned that uh, one of the great things we introduced last year was uh, an electronic version 
or the electronic versions of these publications. I have to say that uh, as part of this uh, recognition that there's a new generation of not only specialty coffee consumers but specialty coffee professionals, we've worked very hard to um, become increasingly uh, technology driven and to do a better job of accessing the worldwide community of uh, users uh, and professionals in the specialty coffee business through our online efforts. I'm here to talk a little bit about what we've done and what we're doing and where we hope to go in the future. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce the uh, senior director uh, responsible for these activities, Mr. Peter Giuliano. Hello, everybody. Um, this, uh, so we're talking a little bit about, about our online community, the, and it's been brought up a, a few times before how over the past couple of years, SCAA has taken the initiative to reach out to people in the, um, in the netherworld of the interweb space, so to speak, and that gives us access to new media. For example, um, this is the, did we say it was the third meeting that's been broadcast this way, um, which is one way that, uh, that we're, we're reaching out to people in the places that they live and work through technology. It also gives uh, everyone the opportunity to see how photogenic and charming our board of directors is. Um, and uh, but anyway, you can see that what our online community looked like in uh, in 2013: 42,000 Facebook um, fans, uh, 36,000 Twitter followers between us, uh, the Specialty Coffee um, Twitter handle and the Barista Guild Twitter handle. Um, all of these. All of these numbers I've just checked this morning have increased. They, they in 2013 they essentially doubled um, over 2012, and they have uh, by now they have increased another 50 percent. So this is an incredibly quickly growing um, uh, sort of community access access point where our members and our fans and consumers even can access, especially coffee community. Um, and it's a really vibrant and positive way. We've opened up uh, we've, the YouTube channel, I think, is especially interesting. Um, lots of views on the YouTube channel, and we introduced for the first time uh, symposium videos in 2013 to uh, the general public. So um, this is, a, as I said before, a particularly exciting and vibrant part of our strategy. Thank you, Peter, and we're looking forward to seeing this segment of our Outreach grow. Um, I, I was uh, told uh, in the reporting back from this year's uh, event activity that um, the SCA event hashtag uh, generated something in excess of three million views when it was all tracked, which is astounding to me uh, as a guy who grew up with smoke signals to see it, see things evolve to that point. But uh, we continue to have a lot of emphasis on our ability to communicate uh, electronically and to, to uh, spread the word uh, to as many people as possible about the work being done in specialty coffee and about access to specialty coffee and about the particular uh, importance of specialty coffee in our world. We continue to outreach in traditional forms as well. Um, we continue to be in, uh, my kids tell me, in meat space where we uh, actually can see each other. Uh, face to face across the table, but we're engaged in a ton of activities uh, beyond uh, the confines of, uh, of the U.S. and North America. They're designed to uh, increase the long-term viability of the specialty coffee world. And here to talk a little bit about that uh, is the current president of the SCA and uh, the treasurer for World Coffee Research, Mr. Sean Hamilton. Uh, thank you, Rick, and good morning, everybody. Um, as you've probably heard as a common thread through today, global outreach is becoming more and more important to our membership, uh, which is growing internationally, both with producing countries and consuming countries. <clears throat> so a few of the things that we're engaging in internationally, um, World Coffee Research, which was born at Symposium in 2009. Uh, that's getting underway very, very well. Uh, the variety trials that um, they proposed starting have now started. Uh, and there was a big effort that was mobilized in Guatemala last year around the rust issue, which also has had a lot of significant progress. Uh, <clears throat> the checkoff fund was also put in place last year, uh, which for those of you that don't know about that, uh, contact your green coffee importer and he can probably tell you a little bit more about that. A lot of them are participating now where you can um, add a half a cent to your coffee price and have that 
donated into World Coffee Research for coffee research. So the importer will take care of all the paperwork and all the fund collecting of funds for you. So it's a great way to participate. It's an easy way to participate in the program. Uh, some other things that we're working on, um, International uh, Relations Committee or Council uh, now continues to work on global issues. It's currently uh, being held by the SEAE and we're working very closely with them to be very inclusive of all countries and people across the world. And we're collaborating together to uh, unify things like education and standards worldwide so that everything is on a very common platform with all the partners that everybody works with. Uh, the Global Educational Outreach now includes over 15 international partners and we're providing a variety of educational opportunities all over the world, um, which you also heard earlier, that's one of the biggest growing portions of the association right now is our educational outreach. So, Great, thanks Sean. This is a big piece of uh, the activity over the last four years for this association has been to foster an environment in which uh, meaningful activities can take place on a global scale. Uh, World Coffee Research is one manifestation of the community coming together to solve a problem at a global level that's never had a champion uh, at that level in the past. And so the desire uh, of the community was to, to develop an international opportunity, and we worked hard to do that. World Coffee Research is one manifestation of that. But there are many, many other challenges facing us and we have uh, other activities that we will have to foster and incubate and drive, and many of them revolve around the compelling, the most compelling question for our industry today, which is how will we guarantee the future sustainability of our value chain so that our coffee is an activity that benefits not only the consumer who consumes that wonderful cup of specialty coffee, but all the participants in the value chain from uh, farmers and laborers through the rest of the value chain uh, to, to the roasters and retailers on the consuming side and ultimately to the consumer who pays for that cup of coffee. Here to talk about our engagement on sustainability efforts um, historically uh, as well as what our ongoing engagement is and will be, it's my pleasure to welcome a champion of sustainability uh, in his years as a coffee buyer and uh, currently is on to our sustainability council, uh, Mr. Chad Trevitt. Thanks, Rick. Uh, so as Rick mentioned, I think that we as an association really recognize and understand that uh, we in coffee are uniquely positioned to really learn and understand a little bit more about the sustainability of our value chain. We are deeply connected to both our points of uh, origin and uh, other, other members of our value chain and how, how we're able to share that value and that economic earning potential throughout that value chain. Uh, I'm proud to be liaison to this uh, sustainability council. It's an incredibly dynamic group of uh, engaged, passionate, and uh, diverse individuals all working toward the sustainability of our value chain. Uh, as Tracy mentioned, we've put out a couple of products. Um, these products have been in, uh, in, in answer directly to uh, uh, need from, from the Barista Guild of America, for, for example, looking toward uh, guiding practices for how they might try and run a more sustainable cafe to minimize their impact, importantly, uh, from an environmental perspective, but also to be smarter economically and uh, efficient in, in how they run those operations while they're conserving resources, not just environmental energy, water, um, but also uh, financial resources. Um, in addition, um, we have the uh, Start Database, which is a comprehensive platform for companies to uh, sign up for, for the use of, to really track and monitor their sustainability performance and impact uh, through, their, through their business activities. And uh, lastly, our Sustainability Award in 2013, that award went to Pueblo of Pueblo uh, for their organic gardening program in Guatemala. And what we really try to do is uh, highlight and feature, recognize those organizations that are doing a great job in spreading sustainability and in those values throughout the value chain, particularly uh, landing on the on the producing side of the value chain, where we where we would recognize that the sustainability, both environmentally and economically, really really needs uh, increasing and ongoing attention. Thank you. Thanks, Chad. Uh, it's worth noting that uh, nominations for the Sustainability Award just opened this week, I believe. So if you know somebody who's doing something important in the world or an organization that's doing something important in the world of coffee, there's an opportunity for you to reveal them to the rest of the community. 
Uh, I should take a moment for, I don't know if the camera's on me or not, but uh, coffee today was provided to us by Chocolate Fish Roasters, and uh, in a unique turn of events, we're actually drinking uh, the coffee that was grown by one of our board members, uh, Mr. Juan Luis Varios, and uh, say it's a fantastic cup of coffee, so thank you to the farmer that produced it, thank you to the roaster that roasted it, and uh, thank you to the folks here at Davis who brewed this coffee for us, so, and most importantly for hosting us. All right, um, we're going to move on with a couple of other uh, opportunities here, one of which, not the least of which, is a chance to answer some questions uh, from all of you on what you've heard here today or what you may not have heard here today. Um, again, you can make those questions uh, appear by, uh, by uh, reaching out through our Twitter feed, but we also uh, have a couple that already came in, and I will, uh, I will take the first one and pass the second one, I think. So the first question we got was, uh, what's going on with the SCA uh, database interface? And I'm happy to tell you that uh, we're making a major investment at this moment in time, and we'll be transferring our database and our web interface from our current platform into a new platform that's uh, quite a bit more accessible uh, for the members and which allows information to move very effectively. So if you're in one of our uh, education programs and are taking classes towards certification, then uh, you'll be able to record that, uh, that work uh, seamlessly and to live with your profile in our database uh, throughout all the events and classes that you attend. Uh, it should also make the general access to a resource center and to all the other things that you want to reach through the web interface for uh, much, much easier to manage. And uh, we should have that online by the end of September. So it's uh, in process right now, and uh, there's lots of folks behind the scenes uh, wrestling all that data to the ground. The next question we got, I'm going to turn over to uh, our current president, uh, Mr. Sean Hamilton, and that question was, um, have we resolved voting issues from the 2014 election, and is there a plan in place for future elections? Sean? Thank you, Rick. Uh, yeah, we had a committee of five people uh, that has been meeting for the last uh, month and a half, two months, to uh, go through this issue and help resolve everything. Uh, <clears throat> that, that committee included myself, Mary Telly, who was the chairperson of that committee, Linda Smithers, Andrew Hetzel, and Andy Trindle Marish, uh, and we've made significant progress on that. We have a uh, outline of all the recommendations from that committee that will be going in front of the board of directors today uh, for further action, and uh, we see no reason why the recommendations made by that committee cannot be implemented for the incoming or the upcoming election cycle uh, that's in front of us right now. So, a uh, lot of progress there, and no issues in resolving it. Very productive committee. Thank you, Sean, Just not only for the report, but for the work. Uh, so um, we've got just a couple more minutes for questions, but I would also point out many of you, all of you hopefully, have received either in your email uh, boxes or uh, in a direct communication from us in one way or another, that the SCA uh, will occupy new space uh, starting next month. Um, we're very happy to announce that we'll be moving into uh, beautiful 100-year-old building uh, in Santa Ana, California. Uh, it's uh, at the corner of 4th and Sycamore on the third floor, and it's fantastic space. Um, we're, we're thrilled to be able to have this space, and it's an open resource for you, our members. One of the features of this is a, a, a very uh, complete uh, meeting room facility that uh, allows for remote access to meetings like this one. Um, with all the built-in pieces that will uh, allow the technology uh, to be seamless. So as members, we invite you, if you're nearby and need access to that facility, we'd love to host you. We hope to be in there uh, the second week of September, and we hope to host everybody who's attending our annual uh, leadership summit uh, for a tour and a, and a small reception there. Uh, Got just one more minute for more questions, and in the absence of those questions, uh, we'll get ready to close this. Uh, would extend once again my thanks to the entire board of directors uh, for their participation uh, in the 2012-13 year, and to the current board of directors for their leadership uh, this year. And of course, thanks to our active volunteer base, the, the real engine that drives the SCA forward. Uh, my personal thanks to the SCA staff for making uh, all of this seem easy. And then finally, one more uh, round of thanks to our hosts, the good folks here at UC Davis, and to our coffee 
provider, folks at uh, Chocolate Fish Coffee. Uh, just a fantastic job on all of it. Thank you, everybody, and uh, we look forward to seeing you at an SCA event near you soon.